Hello everybody, hello Ramblers, hello YouTube. Welcome to the next devlog about Was It Poison? Our murder mystery dating sim about toxic relationships and healthy uh, choice of a romantic partner. Today we talk about a bit, uh, you know, what happened and what will happen and what is currently happening. <laughs> all, of, all three of this. Last time was a bit, you know, I wasn't feeling it too too much because it was the week of you know the unity u news hitting and working with this uncertainty um, but after two weeks of using Godot um, it seems like a good choice but this week I did uh, basically prototyping on the story I wrote a murder poem uh, Brina also did some work for the character, basically prototyping emotions, <laughs> if that makes sense, and getting a feel for the main character. Uh, right now we call her Betty, because she's a bat, you know, it's like it is a bat with an A at the end, not the beginning. Uh, and Brina sent in some awesome footage <laughs> about her progress. And you can, you can see that she's having fun with it. You can see on the character art. Yeah, and then I will tell you about what's happening uh, in the next two weeks until the next devlog. So this week will be basically a call back, back to the room um, because tomorrow is Mental Health Awareness Day and it basically starts off the Mental Health Awareness Week. And during this week, we want to push Duro. We have a big, big discount. It's like 50% off on Steam. Um, so if you haven't gotten Duro and you like to give it a try or you have it, you know, on your wish list and uh, thinking Man, it was a bit, it was, you know, just a bit too much. Maybe now is the time you'd like to go give it a try, um, get the full experience. I did some small bug fixes. Um, I played through the whole game to get some footage. Uh, so I know there are still some bugs, um, but I try my best to, you know, multitask, um, try to get rid of some bugs, try to keep working on was it poison. Uh, it's, it's just me currently in development. Um, so please, <laughs> please uh, uh, be kind and yeah, have a little bit of patience. I am doing my best. <laughs> So what that means is I will be doing some social media work. I did already a little video about the plant life and how it works mechanical wise and how to use it in Duru. And it basically took me the morning to cut it. I love editing and cutting videos, um, but it takes quite a bit of time. So uh, yeah, and then I switched to, you know, um, going through the pictures we have from Duru, some, you know, so we have some material to advertise. Uh, yeah, it's a big discount. Also with uh, like the social media, we of course want to advertise for Duru, but also, you know, um, keep raising awareness for depression and right now seasonal depression. If you know, don't know what it is, like the uh, the, you know, the, the scientific term is seasonal affective disorder, um, which mo for most people comes around during the darker months of the year. And I feel it as well. Like today is, uh, <laughs> I'm looking outside my window, it's just gray and it's raining. And yeah, it's, you know, a day where you just want to, you know, get a blanket, cuddle up inside, but I can't do that because I have a dog and that is a good thing because when it rains, he gets a little raincoat because he's, you know, he has very short fur and he tends to um, get cold <laughs> quite easily when it's like windy and rainy and he's a little yellow raincoat and that, you know, that makes everything <laughs> better in this, you know, hell of grey that is currently outside. If, if you don't have a dog in a tiny raincoat, <laughs> well, it's not that tiny because the dog is quite big. If you don't have a dog in any size of raincoat, um, things you can do is, you know, try to get outside during the lighter hours of day. Um, so like around lunchtime, if you can go for an after lunch walk, um, that might help you, you know, through it. 
then um, I haven't set it up yet, um, but I have a daylight light, <laughs> which um, helps just by, you know, stimulating your eyes with some light that you can't get outside. Um, I think right now I don't need it because I have a light ring <laughs> right next to the camera. Um, but yeah, if, if you don't have a light ring um, and you want something that is not as prominent in your face, uh, maybe daylight light is something for you. And also uh, what might help is uh, checking your vitamin D um, because, uh, you know, during the darker months it goes down and it can have like symptoms like that you have less energy and thus your mood goes down. Um, if that's, you know, just, you know, seasonal affective disorder, if you outside of that don't have, you know, any other problems, if you already have a depression or had a depression, it might kick back in. And so you might try to, you know, get therapy if it's, if you can feel it gets bad again, <laughs> if you can manage to find therapy as well, um, or try the strategies that you, um, might already developed, um, doing a previous uh, therapy um, or just, uh, you know, find a person you trust, talk with them and maybe they can help you through like with going for a walk together. <laughs> I'm not saying that walks will fix anything and everything, um, but, you know, there are studies that it helps your mental health again when things are not like when you don't have a severe depression or, or anything like this. All right, sorry that <laughs> it was a bit of a longer, um, you know, PSA about seasonal affective disorder and maybe depression in general, but you know, that's, that's the thing we do. Um, we want to raise awareness about these things um, and hopefully give some helpful advice. Uh, that was <laughs> that. Now we come to the footage that Rina sent in and I will share it with you. So first things first, Rina starts off with a sketch and she uses a red colored pencil to do it. This way it's easier to clean up the line work in Photoshop. When she's done with the sketch, she basically switches over to ink. So she inks um, the outline analog as well. When we talked about um, her progress and before that, I think she was drawing on her tablet. Um, basically what, what we both found is that the sketches she does by hand in her sketchbook always have, you know, some more dynamic, if you know what I mean, they look more lively and yeah, I think that is due to the things you can do when you draw by hand and with analog tools and you have paper that you can feel and stuff like this. So basically what Verena decided after that is that she will try to, you know, work um, analog as much as she can and then try to transfer it over into Photoshop and see if we can keep, you know, this dynamic lines that she draws so well. In this expression, I love that the fur is acting as well, that you see really that she is angry <laughs> or frustrated. After that, Verena scans her drawing and puts it into Photoshop. And there you can see she um, cleans out the red lines by some Photoshop magic that I don't know. But probably has to do something with, you know, getting rid of color and making it white, maybe? I'm not sure. And after that, she goes in and cleans the outlines. So when she sees there's a mistake or some weird black dots, um, yeah, she just erases them. And 
there we go. That's a frustrated little Betty. When I see Verena's progress, it seems a little bit more professional than what I do. Oh no, what happened? They murdered him! What? That's scandalous! That's, that's an accusation without evidence. Somebody needs to investigate. Maybe he did it. Well, good thing I'm here. It was you! <gasps> oh no, you got me! How did you do it? I have a good sense of character. By the way, that's not the actual prototyping of the story. But, you know, the method is a part of me prototyping story. <laughs> but I also use a whiteboard and, you know, make cards for the story progress. And I basically have a good idea what the first case should be that will be included in the prototype or the vertical slice demo that we're working on uh, right now. And the first case takes place, um, it's basically like an, like the 1920s version of a poetry slam, right? So her aunt, uh, Gertrude Pooch, who is a salon hostess, um, she's having like, a, yeah, basically a poetry slam. I have to, I have to find the term that they used in the 1920s. So basically the poets, um, recite their own work and uh, then the audience uh, says yay or nay <laughs> um, and that goes over multiple rounds and two of the poets are lovers and or former lovers i should say and rivals and they have you know a clash at the party and uh, one of them recites a poem basically about murdering the other to, you know, find a creative outlet for their rage. And uh, as you might guess, the way that is described in the poem is the way the murder takes place. So now, was it a setup or was it foreshadowing or was it like the character thinking, oh, everybody will think it's a setup when I do it the way I described it in my poem, so they won't think it's me, but it was me. Yeah, and for that I had to write a poem, but I'm not able to write poetry. That's that's not the kind of, of writing I, I can do. So for the first time ever, I used ChatGPT to uh, write something creative. I sometimes use it to have like, if I have to write like an official sounding letter, um, I sometimes use it and then I go through it and edit it. And this time I had a blast asking ChatGPT to write me a murder poem. <laughs> Going from there, um, basically I hop now back and forth between the story and the mechanics. Um, first I plan to have, you know, uh, the last week for story and the next week for mechanics. But I feel like since we like to make games where they two are very closely knit together um, and they influence each other. It just makes sense to jump back and forth. Uh, yeah, so I hope next time I can show you something in the engine. <laughs> um, maybe I can find a way to integrate uh, Verena's uh, amazing <laughs> character art already that she has for Betty. Um, but we'll see. Um, so we will keep working on that. Um, also, I started streaming again with Yannick uh, on YouTube. So you can check out our streams there. And, you know, they are not, you know, two weeks on Twitch and then they're gone. I still have them, but it's like... When I have them from Twitch, I feel the urge to edit. And if I start editing like three hour streams, I'm like, <laughs> I won't get anything else done. So streams are happening on our channel and the Polypirate channel, and they are live every Tuesday um, at 7.30 p.m. Central European time. Uh, maybe I see you there. <laughs> I would love to. And uh, yeah, otherwise, um, I will see you uh, next time on the devlog, on our Patreon or here at YouTube. 
Auf Wiedersehen. Bye, bye.